Kinich will be released in the coming few days, but Hoyo has given some creators early access to him. I'm not one of those creators, but since all of Kinich's information is now publicly available, I was able to do my theory crafting on him. So in this video, I will be breaking down the math on what I believe will be his best teams, weapons, artifacts, constellations, and so on. At the end, I'll also give my analysis on how good I think he is overall in the current meta. Now keep in mind this is pre-release, so there may be things discovered with him later that were not discussed in this video. But I do plan to pull Kinich on my own account once he is out, so I will definitely be making a post-release analysis as well. Let's get started. Now first, I'll briefly go over Kinichi's playstyle and gameplay. I won't go too in-depth on this, since you've probably already seen and have the gist of it by now, but basically Kinichi uses his skill and it does a Night Soul Blessing state, which allows him to latch onto enemies and move around them for 10 seconds. His normal attacks will become ranged dendro loop shots, which is considered skill damage, and he will build up Night Soul points via hitting with his loop shots, enemies being hit by Barnig or Burgeon, and by entering blind spots that appear at certain intervals. And once his Night Cell points are filled up, he can consume them to fire off a Scale Spike or Cannon to deal massive Dendro damage. He will rinse and repeat that up to four times. So basically, you can kind of think of his gameplay like a Dendro Navia, but using Barn Ink instead of, instead of Crystallize. Basically, you do a few normal attacks, then big skill, rinse and repeat, just like Navia. And since Burning or Barjan are an important means of building Night Soul points for Kinich, this takes us into his team building. Burning teams are likely going to be by far his strongest teams. The core of this team would be Kinich, Bennett, Emily, or Farina, and then a source of off-field pyro application. Bennett is going to be very important, as Kinich, despite being Dendro, is a pure attack scaling unit that doesn't benefit from using reactions like Quicken or Hypobloom, so Bennett is one of the few ways you can actually get good buffing on Kinich. And then since there aren't too many ways you can hyperbuff Kinich's own personal damage outside of Bennett, having a strong sub DPS to deal high damage alongside him becomes very valuable. It just so happens that MLE has the highest sub DPS damage in the entire game, while also benefiting greatly from using a burning team, just like Kinich, so these two are the perfect duo. Keep in mind that if using Emily, you will need to treat her build equally as important as Kinich, since her value comes entirely from her own personal damage, and her damage improves very well with investment. So you'll want to ensure that she is on an unfinished reverie set while using your pyro applier on the deep wood set to buff both Kinich and Emily, and you'll want to have at least average to above average substats on Emily's artifacts. And having her signature up in our well makes a monumental improvement on her performance, as with it, she is now more than 40% of the team's damage. And this can be taken even farther beyond if you get her to C1R1, as she will now be dealing equivalent damage to a C0R1 Kanich, which is pretty insane. So do just make sure you are taking Emily's build very seriously if you are using her. And Farina can be used instead of Emily. Her damage is much lower than Emily's, but she's still good since she'll be able to be use Vaporize off the Burning, and then in addition to Farina's own damage, she'll provide good buffing. But keep in mind though with Farina, you may need faster pyro application than you would with Emily. And now speaking of the pyro application, for off-field pyro, not only do you have the option of using a pyro unit like Shangling or Toma, but something else I haven't seen anyone else mention yet is that you can also use an Anemo unit with elemental absorption, such as Kazuha, Venti, or Lynette. Kinich won't benefit from the 4-piece VV that Anemo units usually provide, but that's fine because they would just use deep words instead. Being able to use Anemo is very nice because they provide additional utility, such as Venti and Kazuha providing grouping, or Lynette providing an attack percent buff plus a taunt. So with these teammate options in mind, here are the teams I calculated that I think will be ideal. First we have Kinich, Bennett, Emily, and either Toma or Zhongling for Pyro. Since Kinich doesn't even benefit from Toma's C6, You'd probably think Shangling would be a lot better than him, but they both actually result in the same DPS. This is because Shangling doesn't do very good damage here, as you need her on the Deep Witch set in order to buff Kinich and Emily, and Shangling's damage falls off a cliff without Emblem. 
and since Jarkling wants to be used after Bennett, she's taking up some of his buff uptime, so you won't be able to cast Emily's burst during Bennett's buff and still get full buff uptime on Kinech. So because of this, since Jarkling and Toma are equivalent DPS anyway, I would definitely advise just using Toma instead, since he provides shielding, and shielding may prove to be important for Kinech, since it looks like he may have tight timing to get off his fourth spell, scale spiker cannon, so if he gets interrupted, chances are it won't be possible to get all far. And Toma's shield will also protect your Sarpent Spine stacks if using that weapon. And then, as mentioned, we do have the option of using Lynette, Venti, or Kasua as the Pyro Applier instead. Kenichi's looking like he'll have a hard time hitting multiple enemies if they aren't tightly grouped together. So using one of these three can definitely help get them grouped together for that. Now Lynette doesn't have actual grouping like Venti and Kazua, but her taunt is very good at causing enemies to focus on it, which can often result in them running up to it and essentially grouping themselves for you. And sometimes, something that's really nice about this is, Lynette can taunt any non-boss enemy, so heavier enemies that can't be grouped by Venti or Kazua can still be taunted and grouped group themselves thanks to Lynette. And since Lynette taunts, enemies will be focused on it, which can make it much easier to avoid getting hit and interrupted on Kinech. Plus, as mentioned, she provides a 16% attack buff, which makes her the only Anemo option that can actually buff Kinech outside of just using deep wards. It's not a huge buff, but it still makes a difference. And the DPS with Lynette here is actually equivalent to Toma and Jarkling, so she is legitimately a great option, it may actually be the best option in many scenarios. But if you are facing groupable AoE content and really need more reliable grouping than Lynette's Taunt, Venti theoretically should be the best choice. He'll provide strong and continuous grouping for an entire 8 seconds, which should allow both Kinech and Emily to easily hit most if not all the enemies during that time. And Venti also batteries Bennett as he will refund 15 energy to him. Plus, if you happen to have Elegy for the end, Venti's signature weapon, he'll provide a small attack percent buff as well. And Kasua can be used, but in my opinion, he's directly outclassed by Venti here, since he takes longer filled time and his grouping is not continuous like Venti's. Plus, Kasua's damage bonus buff is of no use here. Now, if you are using Farina instead of Emily, the team should be Kniech, Farina, Bennett, and Jungling. Here, you would really want Jeanclin's faster pyro application to ensure that Farina is vaporizing as much of her damage as possible, while still having high burning uptime for Kinech. This is pretty similar in damage and DPS to the Emily teams, but in my opinion, it's strictly worse because it doesn't have the same flexibility to use Toma for shielding or use Lynette or Venti for grouping. So I would really only recommend using this team if you don't have Emily available. Those are going to be the burning teams that I most recommend, so now let's talk about Burgeon. Burgeon teams for Kniech are pretty much just outclassed by burning, because Burgeon really is just not that great of a reaction. You need very fast Hydro application in order to actually get a good amount of Burgeons, which will force you to use Zinc Show instead of a more offensive Hydro unit like Farina or Yelon, so damage is being left on the table by that. So the team for this would be Kniech, Zinc Show, Bennett, and Toma. My numbers here are assuming that you can proc Burgeon 11 times on average. The DPS here is actually pretty good, it's just quite lower than the Burning Teams. Burgeon does help out with AoE damage, but for that I do think just using Lynette or Venti and the Burning Team is going to be better. Nonetheless, the Burgeon team is still pretty strong, and it can be a good option that only needs 4 star teammates. Now those are all of the teams that I found to be worth recommending on Kinech. So let's move on to how to best build him. Starting with his weapons, the options are very simple. Use his signature if you have it, and if not, use either Serpent Spine or Earthshaker. An R5 Serpent Spine with full stacks is actually equivalent to his signature weapon, but unless you're using Toma, chances are you're not actually going to consistently maintain full stacks. But even without full stacks, it will still be his second best weapon. And then Earthshaker is essentially equivalent or superior to every other option, so there's really no reason to use anything else. Unless you already have another option like Vardict or Wolf's Gravestone leveled and you just don't want to use resources to level up Earthshaker. And then for artifacts, Kinech's best set is going to be the new one, Obsidian Codex, by a pretty good margin. If 
you don't have Codex, you can use Unfinished Reverie, but it is about 12% behind Codex, so you definitely want to get a Codex set over time. And can you just damage with alternative options such as Golden Troop or Two-Piece Two-Piece options? is much lower to where it's just not worth doing. Even using a bad Codex or Reverie set is going to be better than that. And for the main stats, use Attack Sense, Dentro Goblet, and a Crit Circlet. Dentro Goblet is way stronger than Attack on Kanich, so do not try to get away with using Attack instead. And for the Circlet, you will almost certainly want it to be Crit Damage, since he already gets 40 Crit Rate from his set, then 11 from his Signature, or 27 from Serpent Spine. Substats just focus on crit and attack percent. Some energy recharge substats don't hurt, as long as it's not coming at the expense of crit and attack. But Kanich's burst isn't very important, so you can just burst on him every other rotation and ignore ER. Now let's cover his constellations. Kanich's C1 will give his spells Scale Spike or Cannon 100% crit damage, which is, increases his damage overall by about 18%, which is pretty massive for a C1 on a main DPS. Kanich's C2 is fantastic. It looks to be one of the strongest C2 of any main DPS in the entire game. It will give him 30% Dentro Rest Shred, so it will not only increase his damage, but also Emily's at the same time. And on top of that, his first cannon will have an extra 100% damage bonus. Plus, it will also have increased AoE. This is a huge 24% damage increase over C1. It will be even more than that for overall team damage since it buffs Emily as well. And then C3 increases his skill level by 3. That is where almost all of his damage comes from, so this is a large 15% increase. C4 and C5 are just going to improve his burst, which especially at this point is a very small portion of his damage, so they're not that good. And then C6 is phenomenal. It basically gives his cannons a very strong follow-up attack that will bounce between enemies, thus making it AoE. So it's both a huge 33% damage increase and a huge improvement to his AoE, much like his C2, but even better. Overall, from C0 to C6, Kanich's damage is increased by 145%, which is some of the most insane constellation scaling in the entire game on top of improving his weakness in AoE. So if you plan to main Kanich, it's definitely a good idea to pick up some constellations, with C2 to C3 being very good stopping points if you don't plan to go all the way to C6. And that covers just about everything. So now, what's my overall analysis on Kanich and where he fits into the meta? Due to not being able to benefit from as many buffs as most other main DPS units, Kanich's own personal damage at least at C0, isn't anything insane, but that's fine because the damage that Emily deals alongside him is high enough to more than make up for that. Based on my math, the Kanich and Emily Borning team is looking to have some of the highest single target DPS in the entire game, up there with characters like Lenny and Arlecchino, and it can be scaled up tremendously with vertical investment into his and Emily's excellent constellations. One of the main concerns with Kanich is looking to be AoE, but due to his team being able to use Venti or Lynette to assist with that, I do think the concern might be a bit overblown. The AoE problem can also be mitigated through getting Kanich to C2 and or getting Emily to C1 R1, as this will vastly improve the AoE output of both of them. So C2 R1 Kanich and C1 R1 Emily is a very good vertical investment goal to aim for, since it mitigates that AoE issue at the same time as vastly improving the single target output. There are some other concerns with Kanich though, such as the way he slides around the enemy, can possibly cause him to end up outside of Bennett's circle for too long and lose buffing. It's hard to say how much of an issue that actually will be without playing Kanich myself, but even with that concern in mind, Bennett should still be the best option. His buffing is just too good to not use. And on that same note, I can see Multiwave possibly being a bit of a weakness for Kanich, since if a new wave spawns too far, you'd likely have to run outside of Bennett's circle before being able to latch onto a new enemy. Overall, I do think he is looking to be pretty strong, a solid A tier DPS. And of course, he has plenty of room to get stronger with the Pyro Archon, so his team is likely not complete yet. But yeah, that's all I have to say for now. If you liked today's video, please be sure to give a like and subscribe and comment your thoughts below. Thanks and goodbye.